All right, thanks for watching. And today we'll do a little bit more practice with the fundamental theorem of blind integrals, which I'll state soon, but basically it helps us what, what that theorem is useful for. It helps us to calculate very complicated line integrals like the following one. So let's do f dr, where f is this one, and c is just the line connecting two points. So the way we do this, first of all, let's draw a really quick picture. We have the point 2, 0 and the point uh, 1 pi. And c is just the line connecting the two. And then what we would like to do, we would like to uh, first of all check if f is conservative. So for this, you have to check if um, you know, a certain equality holds. Namely, if this is P and this is Q, you have to check whether PY equals QX are equal or not. And I know it looks kind of weird, but just think of it in terms of a mnemonic. Think of it as pi m py equals quixotic. Okay. Well, let's check this. Well, the derivative of this with respect to y, py, which is sine of y with respect to y, that's cosine of y, and qx, is the derivative of this with respect to x, x cosine of y minus sine of y with respect to x, that just becomes cosine of y. So indeed you can see both of them are equal, which means we can proceed with the fundamental theorem of line integrals. So the next step is just to find an antiderivative of the vector field f. So let's find little f such that capital F is the gradient of that function. And remember, one to find are always abbreviated as WTF. So in other words, what you have to do, you have to show that sine of y and x cosine of y minus sine of y can be written in terms of fx and fy. What does that mean? On the one hand, it means fx equals sine of y. So, since the x derivative of f is sine of y, f is really the integral of sine of y with respect to dx. But y doesn't depend on x here, so this is a constant, so it becomes x sine of y plus junk. So junk that here, I believe, depends on y, but that doesn't really matter. What matters is f starts with x sine of y and possibly has other terms. And by the way, the method I present is slightly non-traditional, so books don't usually use junk, but it's a method that works in most cases, like 99% of play cases. It should actually work for all cases if you know how to integrate your functions. So then fy becomes x cosine of y minus sine of y. So in other words, f is just the integral of this function, x cosine of y minus sine of y but with respect to y. So what this becomes, it's x sine of y, 
I think plus cosine of y plus some junk that depends on x. So different junk. Okay, now let's see what this becomes. On the one hand, what am I saying? f equals to x sine of y plus other terms. On the other hand, f is x sine of y plus cosine y plus some other terms. So in fact, what f is, is just x sine of y plus cosine of y because those two things are just redundant and get double counted. X sine of y plus cosine of y. And of course, uh, there are many other uh, functions, right, that are antiderivatives of this f, uh, but we just need one of them. Just like in calculus, you just usually need one antiderivative. You don't really care about the constants. And now that you have that, it's much easier to find the line integral. So, integral of f dotted with dr is again the integral here of the gradient of little f dotted with dr. And what's nice is, this is almost like saying the integral of f prime from a to b, which is just f of b minus f of a. So actually what this becomes, f of b is like the end point, f of a is the starting point. So what it is saying is, to calculate this line integral, you do f of this ending point, which is 1 pi, minus f of the starting point, which is 2, 0. So that is what the fundamental theorem of line integral says. It says that the integral of a gradient is just f of the endpoint minus f of the starting point. So here we get f of 1 comma pi minus f of 2 0 and that becomes 1 sine of pi plus cosine of pi minus 2 sine of 0 minus cosine of 0. sine of pi is 0, sine of 0 is 0, and then we just get minus 1 minus 1, and that's minus 2. So, and this is how we calculate uh, the line integral in this case. You could do it directly, but here it's super hard and sometimes even impossible, but the whole point is once you have an antiderivative, stuff becomes much easier to calculate. And in fact, this is why we care about conservative vector fields, because if f is conservative, it can be written as a gradient, things are much easier to calculate. All right, I hope you like this little extravaganza. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.